Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Councillor Merkel. <laughs> so you're off to Downing Street to negotiate the EU budget with David Cameron. And you do so against the backdrop of the Court of Auditors yesterday for the 18th year in a row, failing to give the accounts a clean bill of health. You do so against the vote in the House of Commons last week, where a majority of MPs were asking for reductions in the EU budget. And, of course, you do so with a growing anger in Britain. You know, why are we pumping £53 million a day of British taxpayers' money into this union? Not that that will matter a bit. Uh, Cameron's a very weak Prime Minister, uh, and I'm sure you'll walk all over him tonight and win that negotiation. But the EU budget isn't really the question. It's Britain's place in this union that is the real question. And increasingly, Britain looks like a square peg in a round hole. You see, we didn't join the Eurozone. And that means that every time you have one of your summits in Brussels, when the big debates are going on, there is actually nothing for the British Prime Minister to say. And in fact, if we do say anything, we're now seen as the dog in the manger. The fact is, Chancellor, you are leading the Eurozone on a journey to a much more deeply centralised and, I think, more fundamentally undemocratic Europe. But nonetheless, we simply can't join you on that journey. Whether it is harmonisation of financial market regulations, as you said today, whether it's the financial transaction tax, whether it's the banking union, Cameron is forced into the position, time and time again, where there is nothing he can say other than no. Because British public opinion, and now as the Labour Party appears to have discovered a bit of Euroscepticism, or at least a bit of opposition, you know, he cannot join these conversations. Now I sense in Brussels, not from you, but certainly around this chamber, an increasing growing hostility to the United Kingdom's membership of this union, and indeed there are many here that blame the Anglo-Saxon markets in London and New York for the faults of the Eurozone. Wouldn't it be better, Chancellor, tonight, if you went to Downing Street and said to Mr Cameron, look, this simply doesn't work anymore. It really is time that the United Kingdom left the European Union. He hasn't got the courage to say it himself, but if you said it to him, it might have an impact. <laughs> I mean, all I'm suggesting, all I'm suggesting, Chancellor, is that we have a simple, amicable divorce, and then we'll all get on much better in the future. <laughs> Thank you. One word on the UK. I want to have a strong UK in the European Union. To make that absolutely clear, I come from Germany. The UK was with us when we were liberated from National Socialism. I can't imagine we had British soldiers still in Germany. I can't imagine that the UK wouldn't be part of Europe. And I think it's good also for the UK to be part of Europe. If you have a, a world of uh, 7 billion and if you're alone in that world, I don't think that's good for the UK. And so I'll do everything to keep the UK in the European Union as a good partner. And so that's why I'm going to London this evening. And um, I will ask the um, inhabitants of this wonderful island that you can be very happy. But um, you won't be happy if you're alone in this world. We're a strong Europe with 500 million. We were in favour of freedom of democracy and look round in the world and see where that isn't the case and be happy that we're together. Mr Farage. Part of the EU or not, Chancellor. Um, it's a very different European Union, isn't it? The 17 Eurozone countries are on a journey and are moving somewhere completely different and every single proposal that you come up with, Mr Cameron is forced to say no to. So we're going to find ourselves, effectively, as the Cinderella state. Because you will make big decisions that affect the single market, of which we're a member. And we, in fact, according to you, even UK members of this parliament won't be able to vote on issues that affect the Eurozone, which undeniably knock on to the single market. So I understand what you're saying, uh, but frankly, we find ourselves now in a completely illogical position. I would have thought Britain has to be either wholly fully in or wholly fully out and with a simple free trade agreement. And maybe Mr Cameron uh, will agree with you on this, but ultimately the British populace are seeking a totally new settlement. <laughs>